So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Camarita Podcast. This is where you learn to live like a champion. On today's episode, I have got the real Jason Duncan. He is the one and the only business on, um, I should say, everything. And I'm saying that in a, in a good way because his heart is to help entrepreneurs with processes. Like this is the main part of any business. If you don't have processes, you are gonna just be working like a dog. His job is to help you with the, to exit your day-to-day -day operations so that you can live and, and, and sort of enjoy the financial benefits of what you do. He spent over 13 years in pastoral ministry and four years as a school teacher before he became the accidental entrepreneur. He'll tell us about that. But over the past 11 years, he has been helping businesses launch and build and grow and develop and create and exit, more importantly, so they truly can live their champion life. His expertise is getting business owners like you out of your day to day and, in, and truly enjoy what you do best and let someone else do the rest. So welcome to the Community Podcast, the one, the only, Mr. The Real, Jason Duncan. Uh, well, I've been on lots of podcasts. I don't think I've ever had an, an introduction quite that exciting. <laughs> We're going to build it up, darling. We're going to build it up. We're going to build it up. Jason, this is so good because so many businesses start with the intention of making money. Okay? Most of them start with the intention of making money. The good ones that stay with the intention of solving a problem or serving a need. However, they end up the, the business working them. Why was it so important for you to teach entrepreneurs to start, scale, enjoy, and then exit their business? Well, because when I started my company uh, about 12 years ago, uh, as I said, I was an accidental entrepreneur. I, I didn't really know what I was doing, but mm -hmm. I found myself doing it anyway. And it was about seven years into that process. Uh, of building a, what turned out to be a very successful company that I still own to this day. But mm -hmm. I, but I didn't realize for seven years that I had just built a really nice high paying job for myself. Wow. I was working 50, 60, 70 hours a week, everything. There were no systems and processes all based on my personality, my, my wit, my charm, my mm. ability to think on my feet. And, and I, I was trapped. I was trapped in mm. that business. And I couldn't even sell the company because wow. while we were a multi-million dollar company, it really wasn't worth anything because the business revolved so much around me. Wow. I couldn't, it wasn't worth anything to another party. So it took me uh, about 18 months and I worked through different strategies, figuring out how do I get myself out of the weeds mm. so that I can go on and, and live the lifestyle that I truly want to live because yeah. I was never really passionate about lighting and electrical work, which was what my company was doing. Mm. I thought I wanted, there are other things I want to accomplish, motorcycle dealerships and coaching platforms. And I want to do public speaking. And those are the mm. things I want to do. How do I get to that? And so when I figured that out, I pulled off the exit without exiting. I thought, you know what? Mm. I, I bet there are other entrepreneurs that would want to learn how to do this. Yeah. And so now I've started a, a coaching company that our primary objective is to help other entrepreneurs figure out how to do exactly the same thing that I did. So you talked about something there. I want to go back to it. You talk about exit without exiting. Now, there are a lot of people who are in their business. They absolutely love it. They don't want to leave like you. They want to stay and they want to enjoy. They want to still, you know, travel, but they want to have their hands on. Some people don't want to let go. What is the difference between the exit without exiting and exiting completely so that they can just do what they want to do? Well, I think there's three there's three ways that people think about exiting. So the first way that people think about exiting, the first thing that comes to mind is I'm selling the company and I'm done. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that's, that's, the, I'm out and give me a big paycheck. I'm done. Mm. That's the exit that most people think. Then there's the second way that is what actually happens most of the time, which is I, I sell it, but I'm required to stay in it for a certain period of time, yeah. usually mm -hmm. called an earn out yeah. over, you know, could be a couple of years, five years, could be yeah. longer. And that is a financial exit without physically exiting. And that mm -hmm. sucks. I don't know why anybody would want to do that. Right. But the third way, the way that I discovered how to exit that didn't previously exist, at least as far as I knew, was how you can exit financial or exit physically, but not financially. Like, how do I get out of the day to day without exiting the financial rewards of the business? And so okay, wait, stay right there. Stay right there. 
in a nutshell, what does that mean? So I still own the company. I get all the financial benefits. I still get paid. still get the tax benefits. So I have all the benefits of business ownership, but I have no daily duties in the company. I am silent. <laughs> what does that look like? No daily duties. What does that look like? So we're coming into processes, which you, which you, what your company teaches, your, your coaching company now. What does that look like to the uh, entrepreneur that's listening? And they're like, ooh, that sounds like a dream. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't have to be a dream. The exit lifestyle is within everyone's reach. They just have to build the business the right way. And it doesn't take 18 months to do it. It can You can do this a lot sooner. And of course, like I tell people all the time, you can do this slow or you can do it fast. Yeah. You, you know, which way do you want to do it? And, and if you want to do it fast, you need to hire somebody to help you walk through it. Just like any coach, any business coach, that's what their job is to be able to do is get you places faster than you could on your own. You're going to pay the money one way or the other. It's just you're going to pay it over a long period of time or you're going to do it all up front. So what does it look like? Well, mm. it looked like anything you want to. For me, yes. what I wanted, Ken Lita, is I wanted to be able to exit because I had other businesses that I wanted to start. I had a nonprofit idea that rolled around in my back, still rolling around in the back of my mind that I'd like to accomplish. There were, there were time, you know, family time, travel. I love to get in my RV with my wife and we just travel the country. Uh, I like riding my motorcycle as much as possible. Those are the things I wanted to do. But for other people that I've coached through this process, they just simply wanted, hey, I just need to free up 30 hours of my week so yeah. that I could focus on this other idea inside the company. Right. I could scale us faster if I didn't have to spend 50, 60 hours a week just doing this one thing. What if, mm. what if I could step away from all that crap I used to do? Mm. I still am in the company. I'm still a CEO. I'm still running it day to day. But now I've got 30 hours of my week freed up and I can go do hey, I could start this other division or I could start yeah. this other concept or I can invent this new product or I develop this new thing, new service. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you want to do, mm -hmm. but if you structure it correctly, you mm -hmm. get to do it. It's about having choices. Let's talk about the structure. What does that look like? In, 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 in essence, what does that look like? In, a, in layman's terms, what does that look like? Well, I, I think it depends on what you want. I mean, if you wanted, if so for me, well, I wanted to exit day to day. So what I had, I had four people in my company that mm -hmm. were directors and they were fantastic Had been with me, uh, you know, a relatively long time. They were doing great. And so I pulled them close and I said, Hey, here's what we're going to do. I've got other dreams, other aspirations that I'm not selling the company. I don't want to sell the company, but I, I want you guys to have a key role in mm -hmm. this company moving forward. So I'm going to promote all of you guys to vice president of your respective divisions. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah. give you a, uh, each of you are going to get a $20,000 raise. Mm. Uh, where did that money come from? It came out of my take home wow. salary. Wow, so I wow. took, I, I did an investment into them and they knew where it was coming from. Right. And I said, when you get this money and this responsibility, here's what's going to happen. The first, I don't know, month or two, I'm going to check in with you once a week. I'll come in and meet with you as a team. We'll talk. We'll make sure yeah. everything's going yeah. okay. And then I'm going to check in once a month and then I'm going to check once a quarter. And then now I just barely check in once a year. I still go to our monthly team meetings and I go to, you know, monthly luncheons that we have as a yeah. company, but, but I'm not running those meetings anymore. I don't, I, I'm just there as a participant. And it's funny because we've hired so many people. The company has grown even in my absence that the last one I went to last month, there were a lot of new employees there. And I walked in, you know, I'm just going around shaking hands and saying hi to people. And one lady goes, so uh, what do you do here? I said, well, I, own, I own the company. <laughs> no, no, no. You should have said, you should have said that one. You should have said, um, well, um, I just see what's going on and um, I make recommendations where I can. And she'd be like, oh, oh, oh. You know, you should have played the game a little bit more. You should have just played the game a little bit more. <laughs> oh, I would have loved to see that. I would love to have been there just to see that. No, oh, but it's practice. So, right, let's come back to this. I love it. Let's come back to this now. Those four people or any four people or any six people or any 10 people, what key roles should these people occupy? in order for any business to run without its founder, owner, whatever in place. So you've got, so financials are, are, are one of the most important things. You got to make sure your financials are in order. So you got to have a key person who's controlling finances. Now we have, we have a vice president of finance and administration and she does a fantastic job 
Um, she operates as a controller, not quite as, as a CFO, because yeah. there's there's a, a difference in way controller and CFO operates. But as a controller, she I can trust her with running reports, keeping up with data, making sure that bills are getting paid, that people are getting paid, that the money's being calculated and, and accounted for correctly. You got to make sure that when you step away, because as the founder and the owner, you're still responsible for the outcome. If the, if the company goes bankrupt, it's your name on the line. Mm -hmm. That's why anybody who ever challenges me and say, well, how do you how do you take that much money out of the company and you're even there? Do you know what? The millions of dollars in debt that it took to build this thing, who signed for it? Not you, Ooh. buddy. I did. So say don't talk again. to me. Don't talk say to me again. about say taking it again. money. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> So I took the risk, I'll take the benefit. Mm -hmm. But for the first, you know, seven, eight years, I didn't get that huge benefit. But now I get to have that benefit of time. So the financial per piece, mm -hmm. that person's really important. Now, I don't know, it depends on what your companies do, but I would imagine sales is a huge yeah. part yeah. of it. Close. I was the number one salesperson in my company up until uh, up until I stepped away. And I, I had to, I had to that last year that I was fully active in the business, I had to mm -hmm. come to the grips that. I could not continue to be the number one salesperson yeah. if the company was going to grow in my absence because that, yep. that won't work. So I started putting sales systems and processes in place, which yep. is now part of what I teach in my business accelerator programs. I teach this three-part sales system that I yep. developed. Now we're able to continue to grow revenue or revenue, not quite, but almost doubled year over year from last year to this year. And that was last year was my first full year completely out of the day-to-day -day wow. operations. So we're doing, we're doing great. So if somebody's got to take over that role and I had a mm. great guy that take, took over VP of sales and then operations, yeah. you know, operations from a day-to-day -day operational standpoint, mm. who's mm. managing where inventory goes, who's got the vendor yeah. relationships, who's yeah. managing how projects are operated and run. And of course, mm. ours, mm. our company is a very project oriented company. And then we had a division, yeah. a service division of our company. So I needed somebody in charge of service. I think for every company is going to be different, yeah, but your course. finances and sales and operations are probably your top three. You've got to make sure those three things are covered. Now, I was out of the company for about eight or nine months, mm. maybe it was 10. And, and I decided that with the structure that we had at the company, I needed an outside CEO to come in. So mm. I had been kind of acting as CEO from afar and the VPs were doing a good job. But I realized that, especially with the pandemic and everything that was going on, it, it yeah. presented additional challenges that wouldn't normally be present. So I went out and got another CEO to come in and take take over day to day. And he's he's doing a fantastic job. So let me well. ask a question right there. Will you talk about that? That's, that's good because how has, or how has this whole system about exiting, this whole system about whether it's, whether it's the three that you talked about before, how has the pandemic changed how people are utilizing or how people are exiting or what are they doing differently? Because you, are, you now have the war, you now have all these changes in the economy, the, the, you, everybody talking about this sort of big crash, and then you've got the metaverse and cryptocurrency. So how is all of that going to change the dynamics with what is here and now and what is coming? I think what's even more important to pay attention to it, because if you don't, what's going to happen is you're not going to be prepared for the next change, because if you're still the hinge upon which the entire business operates, mm -hmm. your business is at more at risk than if you were not the single hinge. Mm -hmm. The door needs three hinges to turn and it can't just be you. It's got to have mm -hmm. other people. So let me give you an example. I've got on my podcast, The Root of All Success. I just recently interviewed a guy named Dr. Sasha Becker. He's a He's a, uh, a doctoral a professor at mm. Monash University in Australia, but he's from, I think, Norway. And he did a study of, uh, I forget, it was like 20,000 businesses in the mm. country of Norway over 15 years and discovered mm. that when there was a, a death of a founder, mm. a death of a founder of a business, that the business suffered a permanent reduction in revenue of 60%, wow. a permanent reduction in profitability of over 30%. Wow. Now, there was a difference when the when the founder passed away suddenly, like in a car, crack or, car crash or something, versus when they got sick and there was a prolonged illness mm -hmm. before he or she mm -hmm. passed away. But nevertheless, no matter how it happened, when the founder leaves, the company is not prepared to continue yeah. on. Yeah. I'm proud to say that in my absence, because I prepared it, the company has grown, not reduced, it's not shrunk. So the issue is this, every entrepreneur listening to this show right now, mm -hmm. you're going to exit your business voluntarily or involuntary, mm -hmm. one of the two. 
if you don't prepare your company, you've left every mm-hmm. single employee at risk. So yeah. you have to prepare to exit, whether you want to or not. And that is understanding technology, learning to, to dive into areas that perhaps we might be scared to dive into, understanding the NFTs and the metaverse and understanding how, you know, the, the, the whole aspect of people getting payment through crypto, um, understanding that whole thing about uh, if, if there is a crash, what is going to happen? Who is going to mitigate the risk? You know, where, where the risk is going to lie? Uh, all of that and a whole lot more. Oh, this is this is so good, I'm telling you. The real Jason Duncan. This is so good. Jason, let me ask another question with regard to, you talked about the financial benefits of owning the business. And you touched on the fact that you are able to take monies out and you're able to, to do things now that you wouldn't have done before. Uh, um, do you should uh, let, two questions? Do you still put back into the business from your own earnings, or should one consider if they reach at this stage the, the, to put back money into their own business, or should it just not even go down that road right now? Well, I think I think uh, you know we're an LLC, and so as a, as as an LLC in the United States, it's it's a pass pass through entity. So whether or not the money is received in my personal bank account, I have to, I'm liable for the taxes, right? So, so every, you know, C Corp will be a little different because you can roll those forward. But I think every business owner has got to take that into consideration. Okay. Mm -hmm. If, if the company makes half a million dollars in, in bottom line profit for the year, and you've set your salary as owner at, let's say $200,000, just for the sake Mm -hmm. of conversation, well, what are you doing with that 300? Well, you could take it. I mean, it's actually yours to take if you want, but is it really appropriate to take it out? Yeah, now you yeah, got to yeah. pay taxes. So taxes need to be taken, you know, make sure yeah. the taxes are pulled and paid. But out of that 300 probably would be better to hire, continually hire more strategic people or put mm-hmm. new processes mm-hmm. in place that continue to let the company grow. Now, if you want to take all half a million, it's yours. You own the company, do what, what yeah. you want. But in my case, what I did is I just set a salary and I set, I set a salary, said, this is what I'm going to get paid. So it's mm-hmm. a predictable number I get every single month. And then at the end of the year, we can take a look at, oh, hey, well, we've got an extra couple hundred grand in there. What are we going to do with it? Okay, well, let's do a debt reduction. Let's just pay down on our line of credit or let's let's go ahead and buy that piece of equipment that we need to purchase. Yeah, yeah. We'll make that decision together. I, I think if I was operating the business full time, I'd probably mm. take every dime. But if I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. If that's me. That's my decision. That's a wise answer. That's a wise answer. No, honestly, that's a wise answer. So you were in pastor or still, I don't know, I'm asking spent 13 years in pastoral ministry and four years as a primary school teacher. Then you became an entrepreneur. Are you still in pastoral care? Are you, do you still do stuff at the side? Where is that in the whole scheme of you being this accidental entrepreneur? No, I've given that all up. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> so I, I, uh, I spent, I spent a long time in, in, in bivoc- mostly bivocational ministry. So I had another right. full-time job while I was doing ministry. Uh, the last seven years, I I, uh, I was full time in ministry, mm. but I I left ministry behind and then uh, went went out into started teaching school. And for the last, I guess the last ten or twelve years, I've been completely disconnected from the institutional church altogether. I've been leading yes. a, a home church, yeah. Um, but but I, I but even that closed down a couple of years ago. And and now my wife and I are very happily part of a local congregation here. I'm teaching Sunday school, still involved, oh. but I uh, sh- she won't let me, and I don't really want to go <laughs> back into ministry. That's not for us, not anymore. Well, the thing is, in in life, you you, you go through life in chapters, and you go through life with with sessions and sections and. What is good today may not be good in three years' time. It may be good for today. And some people don't understand because they think, you know, once you're doing that, you sort of should always be doing that. And then they start criticizing, oh, you're doing this. It's all about money now. And, you know, you know the whole thing, how it goes. But people don't really understand. When you are doing this, how many people you are actually impacting in a different way you would not have otherwise have met them had you not been doing this. And, and there are a lot of people that are struggling. They are crying. They are hurting. They they're in the business. They they're working in the business. They're, they're stressed out. They think, "Oh, I can't carry on like this anymore. I need some help." And you are like that sort of guest answer to those people in exiting and just sort of living and and creating. Give me some examples. Obviously, you don't have to call names for you know data, data protection and privacy, but give me some examples of what some people have said to you when they've come to you and they've been like. 
at the wit's end. They want to quit the business. It's doing well, but it can't take anymore. They're completely and utterly stressed out. They're like, oh my God, I need help. Give me some examples of what they've been seeing and how, when you've helped them, how have their lives changed? So I got, there's several different examples I could give. One, one of them is a, a guy that I met. Um, this is kind of the opposite of what you're asking about, but I think it'll illustrate the point saying the same. I met him and his wife on, uh, while well, my wife and I were in Jamaica, uh, last summer, we were there for our anniversary. They were there for her, her, his wife's birthday. And we met on an outing. We're doing the waterfall zip line and all that kind of stuff. And we just get to talk in business and he's a business owner. I'm a business owner. What do you do? What do you do? And, and my core business, the one that I've exited is in the same industry that his business is in. And so we had similarities and he said, well, what are you doing now? And I told him what I'm doing. And he goes, oh, that's very interesting. And we stayed in touch and we connected on LinkedIn, stayed in touch. Yeah. And uh, I started, I called him up and I said, Hey, you know, I do this business accelerator coaching program. It's eight weeks and this blah, blah, blah. I told him what I'm doing. I, I think you'd really be, I think you would really enjoy it because yeah. what you told me about your business and his, his response to me was, I don't want to exit. I love my business. I have no oh. intentions of leaving. I said, well, I, I, I'm sorry that I made you think that that's what this is about. That's my fault. But really what this is about is giving you the opportunity to do yes. more. And he's like, yes. okay. So when he finished it, I did my post, my post uh, cohort for interview with him, just like I do with all my uh, co clients. I said, okay, so what was the biggest takeaway? What did you learn? What? Mm -hmm. And he said, Jason, here's the thing. I, I still don't want to exit. Just like I told you at the beginning, he said, but now I freed up about 40% of my time oh. on a weekly basis. And now I'm getting to open that new division I wanted to open. Oh. So, so that is, that is one story. Now I've got another Another guy who really def desperately wants to just walk away. He's like, I'm done. I just got to figure this out. And, and guess what? He's making huge strides in that direction. I've got another guy who said, well, I've, I've got a business doing multi-millions of dollars. We've got like thousands of employees. I mean, this is a big, big, big deal. And he's like, hey, um, my biggest concern with walking away from day to day is the vendor relationships. How do I deal with that? I'm like, I'll show you how to do it because I had to do the same thing. I yeah. was the... When I started my company, I got on the airplanes and flew to Manu. I flew to China. I flew to California. I flew to all these places and visited the manufacturers and worked on the relationships. And I had to slowly turn that over to other people. And now my guy, Ricky, handles all that. He's much better at it than I ever was. Mm. So it doesn't matter where you are and where you're wanting to go. As long as you're honest yes. about the fact that you yes. cannot be the center of this business, I can help you yeah. get to where you want to go. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. You, you said it. It's about being honest to where you are, being honest with yourself that, you know what, I am, I'm in a mess. I'm tired. I, I need, I need, I need a break. I, I love it, but it doesn't love me anymore. Kind of thing. You know, it's, yeah. it's just, it's being, you're right. It's being honest. And when you are an entrepreneur and you are successful and you run multiple businesses and you do all sorts, you have very few people you can actually talk to very few people who actually understands what the heck you're talking about in the first place. And there's very few people who would say to you, they will give you real answers, genuine, real answers to your questions. Because everybody, everybody else is giving fluff. And so you want someone to be real, honest, give you honest answers to your questions, but listen to what you're actually wanting, not what they want to sell you, which is what you're saying here. With like, like with the first guy, sort of not trying to sell him something that he, is, he doesn't want, but sort of listening to what he actually wants, which is time. And again, you're right. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be all about money. For a lot of people, it's about time. Mm -hmm. It's about the time that they have with the families and the time that they have with the spouses and the loved ones and just the time to do things that they've always wanted to do. And you think, what, are you, what is it all for? What is it all for in the end? Work less, make more. I love it. And the more, is it just money? Mm. Yeah, the more can be choices, time, freedom, yeah. impact. Yeah. But you can't do those things. You can't have more of that if you're working all the time. And you know what? There are so many people. Jason, they just drop and then they wonder, what was it all for in yep. the end? And what you're saying to them is, don't wait until that happens. Make choices now for your life, for your sanity, for your health. Before we close off, I, I want to ask one last question. 
if there if so okay two questions if, for, for, if someone is listening right now and they're like i'm right there like i'm there i've done the whole health thing i've done the whole probably they've lost the marriage they've lost the businesses they've lost not business but they've lost the marriage uh, the health and all sorts and they just they're just treading water how can you help them tell them no how can you help them how, how can they reach you and how can you help them well the the best way to learn this this these four core strategies that i teach on how to do this is to go to exit without exiting.com exit without exiting.com and what i do is i've got a, a program called the business accelerator it's an eight hours of live coaching with me and a group. Mm. So we do a cohort model. So right. you get to know everybody in there. You get the contact information. We have a private forum to communicate. You'll be given homework between sessions. You'll work with your cohort partners to get it done. It, it develops this community of, of people that are using the same vocabulary and have the same goals. Mm -hmm. And by the end of that, those eight hours, we usually do it over eight or nine weeks. But the end of those eight hours of live coaching, you now have the tools to to do your exit, to do whatever that means. Yeah, and yeah. Some some of you is just meaning giving up 30 or 40 hours of your week to put back into some other part of your business. Others, it may be, I don't just want to walk away, let somebody else run this thing. I got another business I want to start. Like I'm I'm about to buy a motorcycle dealership. That's one thing that I've been <laughs> wanting to do in a long, long time. So I'm about to do that. So I that business accelerator is all about how to teach you how to work less and make more, whether that more is choices, time, freedom, money, impact, whatever it is. Mm. Yeah, I love Harley's. I can't write, but I'm gonna learn. <laughs> I've got one of my dream board, Harley Davidson, I love it. Um, I, I said to my husband, I'm just gonna buy it and just and just talk, take it around the garden and the yard. Just, just so I can say that I have one, you know? Come on, come yeah, on. I've always, I've always wanted one, it's like, I love it, love the Harley's. There's a dealership not far from me. Um, so I, I love it. And for the ones that are scared and they're saying to you, look, Jason, I am, let me be honest. I am scared about leaving. I am scared if it's going to work. I am scared if I will not make money. I am scared if my, my people will screw up. I'm scared that, you know, I, I probably just, you know, I'll probably disappoint my family and, because, but I, but I really want to do this. What would you say to those people? Because that, that's, that, 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 that is real. Fear never leads to any place worth going. Mm. And, you know, if you don't know that yet, after living through this world for the last two years, all the fear decisions that were made, it never led us any place worth going. And in entrepreneurship, fear never leads you anywhere worth going either. If you were scared, you wouldn't have started the business um, or you started it in spite of the fear. So why would you now be afraid of the thing that could give you what you wanted most when you started it? You wanted to be your own boss, but you're now your own employee. Mm. What's scarier than that? You wanted to break free from a nine to five and you ended up with a 24 seven. That's scarier than anything <laughs> else. Like just go back and get a job somewhere. It's a lot less stressful and you'll probably <laughs> feel a lot better about your life, but don't let fear keep you from doing the thing mm -hmm. you want most. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was good. The real Jason. That's right. Thank you so much. I absolutely enjoyed this. It was it was so good. Well, me too. Thank you so much, Camel Leader, for inviting me on. You're welcome. Well, guys, look, you heard it here from the real Jason Duncan. You know, started off building, creating, and then decide what do I actually want out of life? How to exit without exiting. Okay, he talked about three ways, selling undone, selling it and being required, but also exiting physically, but being able to financially benefit. You decide where you're at now, and more importantly, do you decide where you want to be, because if not, you, will, you actually will be just working a job. Do you have the financials in, in the right place? Who's doing that? Is your sales team okay? Who is doing operations? Who is servicing the people? And more importantly, do you need a CEO? You need someone outside to help you build, create, and develop. The goal, as he says, is to prepare your company so that you can work less and that you can make more. If you're at a place in your life, whether you're worried about it right now and you're thinking, oh my God, I don't know if I'm going to do this, just, just do this one thing. Learn those four core strategies by going to exitwithoutexiting.com and ask the question, learn what to do instead of worrying about fear 
to hold you back from doing and, and creating who you want to become. You've got one life. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is it. And so if you don't do it now, when are you going to do it again? Get up and get it done. This is your moment. This is Camille to hear from the Camille to podcasting. I'll see you soon. And you know, I will see you at the top.